So I've been on uh, the losing side of a couple of really lousy games with the, uh, the Pribble recently. And I, would, I don't play this as my main defense for, uh, for Black anymore, but I'd like to think that I could still go back to it if I, you know, felt like it for a change of pace. You know, openings are just like tools. They're not something, you know, which, you know, becomes part of you on the chessboard or whatnot. They're just ways, ways to open a chess game that, you know, give you different sorts of positions. And some of them can be used, you know, whenever you want, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so one of the games I lost on, uh, Chess Cube is where my opponent played F4, which is considered to be the most critical line. And then Queen A5 is considered to be kind of a must, uh, you know, setting up some counterplay on the e4 square. Now, normally white plays bishop d3 here. Bishop d2 is also quite a viable choice. And there's the immediate e5 as well. So my opponent played the uh, the unpinned variation, bishop d2. And I simply forgot how to play against this. I mean, e5 I think is fine. But after knight f3, uh, the bishop g4 I don't think is working here. Um... I think it's better to, in this position, take on d4, and after takes queen b6. I think I, I vaguely remember that this is the line that, uh, um, was it, uh, Andrew Barton, I think, I saw a video on this, recommended the, uh, the e takes d line against the, uh, the unpinned variation. And here, there's, there's just a simple idea that, uh, black is attacking two targets, and white can try and give up the b2 pawn in various ways, but black has a pretty solid position, so he should be able to, uh, you know, withstand white's gain in activity. Black, white plays knight b3 to guard both hanging things, then black can play a5 with the idea of trying to kick this knight away and winning b2, and then if white plays a4 to stop and just knight a6, and, you know, coming into b4 with the knight, and just playing, like, you know, bishop b6 and d5. Um, should be all right. Um, yeah. So playing this J. Roby chess uh, yesterday. Uh, what did he play? Ah, he played the uh, the knight f3 variation, and this I think is totally fine. Uh, queen queen d2, and now I I still think d5 is appropriate. But then, just play back to knight fd7. Yeah, knight, uh, after knight e4, the position became, I wanted to make the position interesting, but it became a little bit too interesting. And I managed to, uh, to lose easily to very natural looking moves. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons why I shied away from this defense. I mean, when played correctly, it's quite solid, but uh, it's, it has the potential to give black some some really bad positions if you uh, if you do an inaccuracy. Um, so yeah, this would have been or you know I I could have just taken here with the idea of meaning bishop f3 with d5 and again this type of French with this bishop is not on such a good diagonal. But I was concerned about g takes where white is castling to the queen side, and then this uh, this rook becomes a you know developed piece, and this this type of position, even though um, even though these pawns are fractured, it's difficult for black to take advantage of, and black has a very slow position here. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm using a uh, different uh, video recording um, software than usual. Uh, this is OBS, which J. Roby actually told me about. So I was using Cam Studio before, but OBS is pretty nice. I haven't quite mastered it yet, but it's uh, it's quite flexible. Um, yeah, so we're on uh, we're on ICC, and right now I'm just doing an examination. But um, let's play a live standard game. I'm gonna hop into the 15 minute pool and see what happens. Um, I don't. I have not been annotating these games. Or I have not been commentating these games because I, I feel that I play much weaker when I 
try and talk and uh, you know try and explain as I play. Um, but so that, that's that's why I haven't done any of the uh, fifteen minute pool games that I've played on uh, the ICC yet because I'm I'm kind of trying to take these uh, pool games seriously and you know try and I I only play one pool game a day on ICC and I try and learn as much as I can from each one. Um, let's see, okay, I'm now in the fifteen minute pool. So it should probably it's gonna pop up with the game as soon as I get one. Um, the fact that it's taking this long to pair me probably means that I'm gonna get a, uh, a not so high rated player. Okay, so this guy, uh, Torpedo Man, is at sixteen twenty one. He's playing the, uh, the Owens, an opening which I play sometimes, but not never in any meaningful games. Got to play the Queenie too. Um, so my my general setup is I want to play pawn c3, then pawn a3, knight f3, and castles. So I also could have played knight f3 in that position. All right, this is a little unusual, but I don't think it's going to impact anything that I'm doing. Um, knight f3 or c3 here. How about... I, I certainly, uh, do I really want to keep the possibility open for me playing f4? Um... Let's not overthink this. Let's just play simple moves. And uh, all right, so here I, I can play h4 right away and try and t take advantage of the early position of this knight on g6. You could play h5 in response, but then that weakens the g5 square. So I think I think it is worth it to possibly you know give myself you know compromise the Kingside Castle position, weaken the g4 square, but I'm getting good, you know, threats based on this misplaced knight on g6. And I'm, I'm jumping on this knight before it has the opportunity to drop back to a nice square like f8. I Me mean, bishop e7, I play h5, and then the knight has to go back to f8, and now uh, black can't castle, I guess. Um, here, I could knock the knight back to e7 if I want to, or I could drop the bishop on g5. I think I'm going to delay that decision, and I just, I just play c3. I move which, should black play c5, I want to have in anyway. Alright, so he really wants to play the bishop to a6 and trade off the black square bishops. Um, that is the only conceivable saying that I can, the only conceivable reason I can think of for him playing this way. I think I'll kick that knight back now. So one idea to meet this is to play b4 and then b5. Another way to meet this would be to play a4 and then park the bishop on b5 when he plays bishop a6. Um, B4, he could just play C5 and play for, you know, try and open up in the center. Um, I could play Knight A3 and then Bishop A6, Knight B5. That makes sense, none of this D6 is weak, so I think I'll do that. So if he plays Bishop A6 like I think he will, I'll play the Knight to, uh, to B5. He currently cannot play his pawn to c6 to kick my knight, because then his uh, d6 square is dropping. So I think I would play knight e to c6 Check. if I were him. But he decided to trade off his bishop for a knight. 
Now, I haven't committed all my pawns to the, uh... Let's see, what do I want to drop back? D3, so if you have, if I go back to A4, he would just kind of play Queen E6 and trade off my guys. So I haven't committed to the E5 push yet. The E5 push, he'll push past with D5, yeah. And here, if I push to E5, I'm creating a closed position, but he has the better bishop. Um, so I'm going to do something else. I am going to see hop in with the knight to E5 or push H6 or bishop g5 even. Bishop g5, he might play h6 himself, so. I think I'm going to play this move, expecting that he'll play g6. And then I'll bring my bishop out to g5. And then, with the idea of maybe playing my bishop into f6. So, my concept is, instead of just locking all my pawns on the dark squares, which complements his, uh, his bishop, I'm trying to attack him on the dark squares. So now, I could take on uh, d5 and then play queen e5, or I could play bishop g5. I like this bishop g5 idea a little better. Takes here. Um... I think queen takes seems appropriate. Oh, you brought a mousey. Okay. All right. So yeah, this this is how you're supposed to play against lower-rated players. You just you, you don't overthink things. You just play. You know, come up with very simple concepts and straightforward developing moves to to realize them. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is a new video. Uh, I think I mentioned it. I'm using OBS, Open Broadcasting Standards, the new video recording software that Jay Roby told me about, which he uses for his videos. And I think it's pretty cool because now I'm actually taking videos in HD which I don't know if you really need HD for this type of deal, but. All right, this knight move covers his uh, F6 square, which is important because I was thinking of just dropping in there. Um, ideas for me. It might be nice eventually to get a knight there, but that takes some time. If I play C4 to get that knight away, then he could come into the B4 square and then possibly exchange for my bishop. So do I want to play a3 first to stop him from coming to b4, or just play this? Um, and then if he plays knight b4, I play, I play bishop to um, f6, which is what I wanted to do. And then he brings his rook over, and I play knight g5. I kind of like that idea. I don't think it's worth a tempo to save my bishop on d3 because it's not really an effective piece in this uh, current scenario. Oh, except if I play c4, it's bishop b4 check, and that's annoying. All right, what else is he going to do? Is he going to play f5? I don't mind if he plays f5, I think, because my queen just dropped back to, to e2. So again, in the uh, in this particular you know setup against the Owens, a3 is an important move because it takes away the b4 square and allows white to play c4 to kick the black knight from d5. I anticipate he'll play f5, and then I'll play my queen back to e2, and then uh, his f6 square is not so weak then, but he's also created weaknesses for himself on the e-file. All right, um, he wants to exchange the bishops, so I can't get in. Um, my idea is here, queen e5, he just plays f6, that's not good. Um, c4, he takes on g5. It's not good for me either. Well, I certainly, I certainly would like, if I retreat, he'll just play knight f6. 
Um, so here, I think it's in my best interest to trade these pieces off. Even though I did have the bishop pair, my bishop pair was not that effective, and trading off the dark square bishop will hopefully allow me to exploit him on his obviously weak dark squares. So how do I attack his dark squares without the dark square bishop? I can't play uh, queen e5 because then he'll just play f6. Um, if I were to get my knight to e4 somehow, then I'd be looking at both uh, d6 and... Alright, so here, he took, I actually thought he was going to take back with the king, because this actually does allow me to play queen e5, because he can't play f6 anymore. I feel that that is the best move, to, to bring my queen to a dark square, now that my dark square bishop is gone. Oh, so now knight g5 to attack the h7 pawn. He just plays f6. I don't know, but he can't play f6. That's right. f6 is not sufficiently protected, so... Knight g5 seems to be the correct follow-up. Moves he could play here. Knight d7, which hits my queen. I can't go to d6, because then he has knight f5. Huh. Torpedo man resigns. Well, that's, that's unexpected. Um... Well, I, I don't think it's fatal. I mean, he certainly has bad weaknesses, but... Um, yeah, I guess he, did, he didn't have confidence that he would be able to hold that position. Same minus one. Let's... Uh, let's pop on the, uh, the Houdini. And it actually thinks that white is up, like, two whole pawns in this position for some reason. What happens if knight d7? Just queen f4. And I guess in addition to taking this, I'd possibly have the threat of going here. Um, yeah, e e4 is nice. So I guess f5 is the top move to prevent that, but then just takes here. I guess it's... I guess it's scoring so highly for white because it sees the pass pawn on the h6. So other interesting moves. Yeah, after this exchange, it thinks I'm up like two whole pawns. On, uh, and here already it thinks I'm up a whole pawn. So I think that, uh, I think that my opponent's concept of the, the early 97 combined with this uh, with this scheme of trading off bishops is not uh, not that critical. So here, um, yeah, oh, it, interesting, in this position it already, well, I guess it, it values my uh, control at the center. It already says I'm up 0.72 um, and, and says that black should just keep developing here. But... Anyway, that was a uh, that was a live standard game on ICC, a uh, in the 15 minute pool, and with a little bit of extra analysis uh, beforehand. So, I uh, hope you have a good day, and uh, and I will try and bring you better quality games in the future. Thank you.